couple of things struck me when I was away, and I understand this is a little bit old, but what's to gain from the Western Bulldogs extending Luke Beveridge's contract right now? Just certainty, I guess, and that's why they do it. Now, whether or not that's the right move uh, is in the eye of the beholder. But uh, just certainty, I think, for both Luke and for uh, and for the Bulldogs, he he could. There was suggestions he was potentially going down to St Kilda if, mm. in fact, um, they didn't find uh, Ross Lyon. So there is a there is a, an issue about longevity, and I'm I'm a bit with you in that. Why keep signing blokes up? But uh, the certainty, obviously, if they're both happy with each other, there's no problems. Yeah, so I, I'm interested in your thoughts, one three hundred seven three six seven three six. 736 I didn't think he had a great year, um, and I, I wonder how long a premiership guarantees you as a coach. And I, I just if I was in the position of, of the Western Bulldogs, I'd be waiting until at least mid-year. I mean, the, the art of when to recontract a coach is not easy, and we've seen that recently as we discussed with St Kilda and Brett Ratton. But I just thought he had a poor year, and that, and that may be how do you, harsh. How do you actually well, determine how he, well, good a year he has? Well, I think their list is a is a top five list. I don't think their list wants for too much. You can talk about key defenders behind the ball, but every list has something that they would like to address. But the talent of their midfield, their young key position players coming through, star centre half forward in Norton, a great captain, and they refuse to defend. Now. I thought the, the grand final, the second half, was embarrassing for them. I thought their elimination final loss to Fremantle after being up by 34 points at quarter time was also embarrassing. I think they are inconsistent with their effort. And furthermore to that, and, and, and once again, this, this may be harsh, I don't think he's been a great ambassador for the club. And, and I go back to his public comments, bizarre targeting of the media in the lead-up to that grand final. He was concerned about leaks and footage of that song that – after the Port Adelaide game that got out. Then he had the, the issue with Tom Morris. He then went on to have some comments about the treatment of Aaron Norton this year, which were proven to be false and, and out of line. I, I just don't think he's been a great ambassador, and I think it's an important year for him. And, yeah, I, I wouldn't be signing him to a contract extension now. I'd, I'd almost make him earn it. Well, that's the other side of the, uh, I guess, the, the coin. You do that, um, but clearly they have a far different view to the dogs, to uh, to Luke than you do, and they're going to pen some paper. So you may be well and truly right in hindsight, but uh, and I'm sure St Kilda would have preferred to have uh, delayed a period of time as well. But uh, when you've got that premiership in the bag and you've got a lot of young kids coming through, um, you know, you're focusing on a lot of negatives. Um, mm. They're obviously seeing plenty of positives. All right, we'll wait and see how that plays out. The other one was, uh, was, was Mark Evans from Gold Coast, and it was... Once again, a, a strange trade period for them. Um, we don't have the audio of what he had to say, but essentially on the back of a sponsorship announcement, and part of this is spruiking the club to, to further sponsors, I get that, but he said Queensland's going to be a bigger AFL market than South Australia in three years, and he's referring to the TV rights. Do, TV rights or viewers? TV viewers. Um, do you, you find that? I, I think, uh, like when I saw that, I thought he wouldn't make such a comment unless he had... Hardcore facts. Now, whether or not he's talking about potential viewers or people who actually tune in, that's easily measured. So I don't think he'd be leaving himself open. I mean, I, I agree with you. I, I assume you're saying uh, you find that hard to believe. Oh, well, well and, the ratings this year, this is just on Channel 7, so I don't have the, the Foxtel ratings. And this is the wide Brisbane area, so this would take into account the Lions games, and they are flying as well. So 27,000 uh, per game on Channel 7 in Brisbane as mm. opposed to 77,000 in Adelaide for Port Adelaide and, and Crows games. That's a that's a large gap to, to, to close, considering Port Adelaide and the Crows weren't flying this year either. Yes, and I, 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 he would know that. And I think you need to get a lot of the Fox numbers. And mm. I, I suspect if you're north of the Murray, Fox is your go-to. Um, certainly uh, Sydney has got a huge following on, on Fox. So those numbers, you'd have to combine them. But, uh, I mean, it just seems logical that what you're saying, there's a big gap there and it's going to be hard to, hard to breach in the space of three years. But that said, it is a burgeoning ground, grassroots football state now certainly mm. southern Queensland, but whether or not they can turn that into people watching the Suns, A, will de be determined by how well the Suns are going, and B, it'll be determined uh, by um, just how many people are actually tuning into all AFL games. I mean, yeah. if he's talking about the Suns versus Port Adelaide, it's hard to see them, them, that, that winning. 
if you're talking about the Crows versus the Suns specifically. But if you're talking about AFL versus AFL, um, well, maybe he's got a he's got another blueprint there that he's going to be measuring from. Yeah, and I guess the real measure is how many people turn up to your games and how many people buy memberships. They're 18th in members, 21,000. That's 11 uh, fewer than GWS, 37,000 less than Port Adelaide. Year 12, Jared. it's a big year for them. I mean, Adelaide, year three, they made a prelim final. They won a flag in years seven and eight. Port Adelaide won a flag in year eight. West Coast was year six and eight. GWS in year five and six made a prelim and in year eight they played off in a grand final. Gold Coast year 12 now and they've got two 10-win seasons to show for it. So I wouldn't be making big claims like that. I'd be letting the football do the talking. Yeah, they've been a disappointing development uh, side, if you like, because they've had three or four cracks of developing and, you know, it's it's this time you would expect them to go through. They're very confident they're going to make the eight. I'm not so sure that will happen, but... Mm. A lot of things have got to go right to make the eight, as you know. There's a big gap between finishing in the, in the sort of 10th to 15th position and, and marching your way into the eight. But they do get a good draw. They, they have recruited a bit better. But, yeah, still making mistakes. They've, they've made mistakes over the journey and, you know, shipping off people with high draft picks to see, seems to me to be a, a zero-sum game. But uh, clearly they're trying to just reset their salary cap and... Um, I understand one of the some of the reasons why it's been out of kilter the salary cap, but they have just got to take a really really strong view towards it. And uh, if you can't make it work, well then the club can't work. Mm, big year for Gold Coast and Stuart Dew. It's a big year for the Carlton Footy Club, who I'm more optimistic about. I did love uh, yourself and Jono's preseason early predictions. Uh, I'm a big fan with what the Blues are doing. It was day one of preseason. Yet, yeah, Jared, are they ready? Are the Blues ready? Oh, I think they were ready last year. I, I think they just ran out of puff with injuries. I really do. I think that um, their injuries robbed them. I thought the games, oh, they played some footy that was as good as anybody that I saw this year. But mm. there was a few clubs like that. I reckon Frio played some footy that was unbelievably good this year mm. too. But as you know, Kane, uh, it's not about whether you can do it through the season. It's not about how high you get. It's how consistently high you get. And uh, that's the difference between the sides that finish in the prelim finals and those that uh, mid-season look like they're going to finish in a prelim final but fall away. But uh, I thought they had some seriously uh, unfortunate injuries. Mm. And I think Hewitt was one that still is underrated that when the, the, when he went off the ground, it just seemed that the tyres uh, lost a little bit of pressure. But uh, they do look to me as if they've got a group of players that are capable of doing anything next year. Ready to go, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm on board with, with Carlton. I did like his comments last week. I think he spoke about just not limiting the group and um, not putting a ceiling on what they can achieve. And if it all comes together, they could achieve something significant, you'd think. Now, you'd be hard-pressed hard to convince Carlton people of this. But I suspect they're in a better position for, no, for next year, having missed the finals... Mm. than they would have had they have played a final and potentially won a final because they'd be dog hungry. And I, I just think that, uh, you know, sometimes when you get super close but don't get that joy, that satisfaction of playing finals, you uh, come out in pre-season with just that little bit more energy and uh, drive than perhaps if you had have got there. Yeah, I think it's a good point. And Essendon would probably say the same about one season ago. I mean, they qualify for finals but don't go very yep. far at all and then it all falls apart whereas Carlton have that longer pre-season from not playing finals and that hunger Cripps has played zero finals Walsh Wietering the zero final so uh, they'll be determined to do that uh, it was day one for the new Giants coach Adam Kingsley they take picks 1 15 18 19 31 into the draft it feels like a rebuild to me Jared and, and perhaps one that they needed not that Adam Kingsley will say that but it could be a difficult year for the Giants with a young group Hard to know with the with the Giants. They've still got a lot of quality players. I mean, if you look at the amount of quality on their list and uh, those that you may suspect are going to finish in the bottom four, I think they're still capable of um, of having a you know a year where they're in con in contact with the eight yeah. for a period of time. Now, whether or not they can jump that hurdle, get into the eight, is you know probably debatable. But they've still got a lot of good players on that list. We had a lot of good players didn't play a lot of footy last year, and um, I think that you know with a new coach in, new new match plan potentially invigorated, reinvigorated. I wouldn't be writing them off uh, to have a shocker, but whether that means they finish in the middle six or the bottom six is um, probably going to be determined by injury.
Yep, no doubt about that fascinating year, and that will be the case for a number of clubs.